In this video, I race the MX-5 in iRacing in the MX-5 Cup Series, the Rookies, at Rutskogen Motor Center in Norway, and all from an older gamer's perspective. Track layout. Welcome back to the race of the week where I take the most exciting race of my week and share it with you. This week it's the MX-5 rookie race at Rutgenskogen Motor Center in Norway. I think I butchered that name didn't I? And it's a lovely track as we see it from the air here. It's got a lot of hills going up and down. They're very deceptive. You come off the home straight and go into this sort of wide looping corner. Now on cold tires at the start that can be a little bit deadly. You go a little bit wide there but if you go too wide you will get an off track so you have to be very careful of that. Now it's deceptive here from the air but it's actually a very steep downhill track and it ends with this tough bend at the bottom so you have a lot of momentum dragging you along and all of a sudden you're into this double uh, bend that comes up before you come into these snaking S. Now this goes uphill and that takes a bit of the edge off of all these bends and you can control it a little bit better but when you get to the top here there's this hairpin now this goes round here and then back downhill again you got to be careful it's very easy to spin out there or go wide on that particular corner and then you go back downhill again into yet another hairpin it's just all hairpins this course it really is it drives me around the bend and then you go up a, a little hill now this one's not so dramatic but again it's it makes it kind of easier to handle so that when you come into this sharp left hand bend you feel really like you're a little bit more in control of the car than you have been for the last minute or so and then there's this looping corner that you go around the for some reason I found very difficult to do and I could never get the hang of it. And you come wide on that and go down the home straight again here, past the pits and over the finish or start line. And with this course, a fast time here is around 137. You should be averaging at least 140 if you want to stay competitive, particularly at the beginning of the game when there's a lot of traffic and you're struggling to maintain a place. But if you can get close to 139, 140, then you are a contender. Race commentary. So here we are at the beginning of the race and due to some off tracks during qualification, I actually started at the back, which was quite disappointing, but I made up some ground straight away as we came into this first corner. As you can see here, the lead car got away really nicely, but the uh, two cars behind both span off to the side, giving the lead car really uh, full uh, crack of the whip there to shoot ahead and uh, cement its lead over all the other cars. Now I managed to stagger through all of that chaos and come out the other side virtually unharmed. So we're heading now down this sharp downhill section into this horrible bend that comes up. Somebody went straight past me there and uh, off wide and a car in front of me skidded off at the same time. That happens all the time at that bend. Hot tires, cold tires, it doesn't matter. People spin off there all over the place. And we come through here, you've got to be careful. There are uh, the elements to get off tracks there. And also there's this uphill, downhill horseshoe bend where people, as you just saw with the white car there, lose their grip quite quickly. Now the cars are beginning to lengthen out here and we're not even done one lap. And as you can see, the cars in front are getting away from me. Now I'm quite keen that that doesn't keep going on because otherwise I won't be able to catch them. The, the race isn't long, this is a rookie race, so it's only about uh, 11 laps, I think, something like that. And it, it's a sprint race. You really, really got to catch up with these cars and get past as quickly as you possibly can. Now, I'm not as quick for some reason coming out of these corners into the straight than these other cars, but I am reasonably good at getting around those corners a bit quicker than some of the other cars that were on the track that night. Um, when you come down the straight here, that quickness out of the corner has allowed me to drive this car and I'm going to try and come up the inside of it but it's not going to happen I can see that so I back off because otherwise I fear that we're both going to get wrecked and I don't want that on lap two <laughs> maybe I don't want it really on any lap but uh, particularly I don't want it on the early laps now we're coming down here on this downhill again this is a very dangerous place to overtake 
you've got to be careful at overtaking on anywhere really along this track. The best place is the home straight going past the pits, but everybody's going flat out there, so it becomes very difficult to do. The most opportunistic places to overtake are in these corners, but that's dangerous and you have to be super careful what you're doing. To be honest with you, uh, the tactic that I began to settle on really was getting close in behind these cars, putting them under pressure and waiting to see if they made a mistake while at the same time trying to stay far enough back from these cars so that I didn't get caught in those mistakes. You see this car here, he went in too fast to that corner, he lost a lot of speed on the exit and I was able to catch him up and he's feeling the pressure now, he really is. So much so he goes wide again and I'm able to sneak through the inside of him. So I've made up yet another place. We're going okay, I'm in position five on this lap. I think by the time I cross the finish start line, I should be in position four. If I can hold off this gray number 10, or this white number 10 that's behind me, he comes up the inside now and I get the uh, car on your right signal so I can't have the line that I wanted to but he can't catch me and so he falls back behind me leaving me clear to get the line that I need to go into these corners. I've gone in a bit too hot there and when I come out I'm slow on the gear change and it's not optimal, it really isn't. But even so, I'm ahead of the pack. I guess they were even less optimal than I was coming through those corners, which sometimes can happen. Now here's the danger. You're ahead of the pack and you're screaming down here and if you take this corner too wide, you will come off and they will come flying past you. So you've got to be careful. There's a bit of smoke in the air there, so somebody's had a disaster. It's this blue car by the look of it. He's going a bit too slow, so he must have come off just a few seconds before we came around that corner. And we're coming in again to this top horseshoe. The blue car takes it wide and I just about miss him as he's come in, but I had to go heavy on the brakes. And that's given the cars behind me a little bit more chance to uh, try and catch up on me. You see the gray car battling with the white car there. He's my nemesis throughout this race. He's always hugging my back bumper, trying to get past me, putting me under pressure, forcing me to drive in my mirrors, which is never a good thing. It's always a recipe for disaster. And we're coming in now on lap three, and you can see ahead there, the blue and the green car are chasing each other around this bend. And it looks like the blue car gave the green a little tap on the bumper there, and it's put him off slightly, allowing the blue car to sail through while the green car collected a uh, off track on the on the bumper there on the uh, raised corner and as we come in the green car has managed to stay in the lead but I can't see him holding that for long because he's under a huge amount of pressure from this blue car behind who's all over him and I drafting completely all the way around that corner and as we come into this straight it does look like he's going to be able to take him I mean, I'm so concentrated, I'm so focused, sorry, I'm so focused on this race ahead that I'm not watching this grey car behind me who's closing the distance on me more and more and more. I mean, he's practically sitting in my back seat at this point. I feel like opening the boot and asking him if he wants to get in, save himself a bit of petrol. But we come up on these corners now and I'm still managing to do these corners a little bit faster than him. And the green car goes off. I think got a nudge from the blue car there. That was a bit of a shame. But that's eye racing for you. And we come down this hill now. And yes, as I predicted, I've come around that horseshoe bend a little bit faster than that grey. Every time I do that corner, I'm a little bit faster than him. But as we get to this corner, he's a little bit faster than me. And he closes the gap again. It's a game of cat and mouse with this car. I can't seem to permanently lose him. No matter what I do, he catches me up somewhere. There's just this difference between our driving style. I'm faster in one section, he's faster in another. It's really nail-biting. It really was my most exciting race of the week, uh, if only for this grey car that was uh, constantly behind me, pushing me to be a better driver. And you can see we've got the blue car now sandwiched between us, and uh, he was the car that came off a few laps back on one of those bends now, and he's obviously looking to catch up and take the lead. Now, he's a faster car. He's got a 
better pace than me and a better driving line as you can see there that was a smooth overtake straight down the inside and the gray tries to <laughs> replicate that and nearly slides off so that obviously wasn't his style he needs to focus on driving his own style and not driving other people's style that's the problem sometimes with i racing you watch the i racing videos on how to drive these courses really really fast and you don't realize that these people are driving their own style and that might not be yours, it might not suit you, it might not be your reflexes, it might not even really be the way that you like to drive and if you try to drive in that way you will crash a lot and be very frustrated and think hey that other guy was driving this and getting fast times, why can't I do it? It's just the way it is. Driving styles are so individualistic that you have to really do your own thing. You have to do you. You do you and the other guys will do theirs and everybody will then eventually get better and do faster lap times at least that's the theory so we're following down on the track here going into this short uphill and the blue is easing away from me comfortably as i said he is a, a much better driver than me he's got a much faster pace and he's able to take these corners in a better way than me i'm still keeping the gray car at bay mainly because i can do these corners a lot better than him but he's still closing again on me, mainly because when we come out of these corners, he seems to get a faster, better, quicker exit than me, and he's able to catch me eventually. Even with this distance now, if you look at my mirror, you see he's like this dot in the background. It, that doesn't last long. He catches me up really, really quickly. I guess there must be some corners that I am just a, a tenth of a second slower than him, and it's enough for him to catch up. Here comes that green car that, that uh, was nudged off the track. <laughs> Obviously went back to the pits for some repairs and is back in the race on lap six. He's probably like two laps down now or something like that. But he's placed himself now between me and the blue car in front, which slows me down and gives me even less chance of catching him up. I mean, there wasn't that much chance of me catching up. The, the only chance I had was if he span out like that green car just did there. <laughs> <laughs> he's on this lap he's back out on his lap after being in repairs and he's already span out on that particular corner which is a bit of a shame as we come around this one i think he yeah he spins out again there oh dear but as i was saying if i can catch this blue car up my only hope really is that he makes another mistake like he did on that previous corner and, and if he does that then I can capitalize on that and get past him. We're on lap six now. We've only got four laps to do and we're all doing like a one minute 39 or I think the leader is doing a one minute 37. And at that sort of uh, lap speed, it's not much of the race left, to be honest with you. Maybe four laps, maybe five. And to catch him like that when he's got, I'm guessing, looking at the distance there, he must have at least three seconds head start on me, maybe three and a half seconds ahead of me. It, it's difficult to say, but as we go down this straight, it's probably lengthening to more like five seconds. There's no way with the amount of laps that I've got left that I'm going to be able to catch him up. And so I pretty much, I've resigned myself, I guess, at this stage in the race, lap seven, that I'm just not going to get on the podium. I'm at position four. If I can keep this grey car behind me, which I'm battling to do with hanging on by my fingernails to keep him there. But if I can do that for these next three laps, I guess we've got left, then I will at least get fourth place. And I should get some I rating points for that. Won't be on the podium, but you know, hey. So at this stage in the race, I am resigned. To fourth place you shouldn't be of course but there's no way i'm going to catch that blue car you have to be realistic you shouldn't be resigned to being fourth place but at the same time you shouldn't try and wreck your car by trying to catch somebody who's just a much faster driver than you it's just not going to happen so you just have to sit back and race the best you can towards the best place you can but then having said that lap eight produced a wild card as i was heading across the finish start line here preparing really for the penultimate lap ahead of me i didn't realize this the leader came off and collided with the barrier and places one and two shot straight past him by the time i came round the corner he'd recovered himself to get back on the track but as i approached him quite fast i could see that he was in trouble his car was weaving all over the place and 
It didn't look like he was long for this race, to be honest with you. I, I really doubted that he would even be able to get round to the pits, let alone finish the next two laps. And as you can see, as we come up here, he begins to suffer even more. And now his engine has blown <laughs> and he's covering me with smoke. I mean, that, that's it. It's good night for that car. There's, he can't drive. He can't maintain any kind of speed and he can't steer. There's, there's just nothing in this race for him at all. I mean, maybe he's just determined to finish. I don't know. Maybe it's just sheer grit and bloody determination is going to take him towards that finishing line. But that's left me with two cars in front of me, which means that if I can keep that grey car behind me, and he got caught in that smoke-filled car as well, so he's lost a lot of distance on me. If I can keep him behind me, then I will get third place. I will be on the podium <laughs> so i'd resigned myself to being fourth place and yet a sudden twist of fate unexpected gift from the gods has left me in this position where i cross the line and oof, there we go position number three for car number eight and the grey car is quite a way behind me. So I'm beginning to take it easy now because I've just been given the white flag and the spotter has told me, don't make any mistakes. It was like, don't make any mistakes, which always fills me with confidence. And I'm always thinking to myself, I'm just going to make a mistake now that you said that it's going to happen. So the grey car is beginning to catch me up uh, because for him, he doesn't now have anything to lose. If he can catch me and overtake me, he's on the podium. And so he's going to take every risk that you can. It doesn't matter now if he spins out. I mean, a lot of the competition is so far behind us. He could probably spin, crash into a fence, come back on and still get fourth place. It, it really seems like that at this point. And so he comes at me hell for leather. He really does. But I'm focused and I go around that horseshoe bend, which I've always been able to do faster than him. And I do it faster than him again and leave him well behind. He catches me up again on this corner like he's done for the last 10 laps <laughs> but again I can get that faster exit speed and come up on this left hand corner and I can get a better turn on this corner than he can there's just a few of these corners towards the end of the race that I'm quicker at than him the corners at the more the start of the course he's quicker than me but here we are at the end so that's no help to him and we come round and I'm looking at the checkered flag now and a podium position. It's come from nowhere. I finally got my third place after weeks of being battered into last place in the C-Class racing. I've come back to the rookies and I've got a third place. It might not be a win. It might have been gifted to me by a car going off track and crashing. But hey, I'm going to take it. It's third place. I'm happy with it. I'm delirious. I am going to go a big smile on my face all the rest of the evening as soon as this race is finished which is right now results so Ritken Skogen Motor Center in Norway or however you pronounce it was a delightful race for me it was very exciting it's a real nail biter course with all those fast turns and the uphills and the downhills but once you get the hang of it once you begin to balance the car and begin to increase your lap times it's very exciting very close racing and that particular evening it was well raced by all of the other drivers very little bad driving very little nudging i mean there was some going on but everybody was doing really really well including uh, the car that was constantly behind me i think that was car number two perhaps he had such a great race behind me and he was always well aware of his brake pedal and able to keep me safe as well as himself so that was the 13th split of the evening it was a strength of field of approximately 1215 and yeah i mean it had 12 drivers 12 good drivers and we all had i think a lot of fun i came in third place there uh, which gave me plus 63 i rating which I was super impressed with and I even got a plus for my safety rating I think it was 0.2 uh, well that's okay 
I can cope with that. The best lap time I managed was 139.087, which was about a second and a half off of the best lap time from the winner. Uh, but my average lap time was 141, which was slightly under a second uh, less than the people that were in front of me. So I was I was pleased with that. I could go faster, I know, and I will learn to go faster, I hope. But I was pleased that I was at least keeping up with the pace. If we look at all of the other drivers that are behind me, most of those were slower than me on the average, a bit quicker on their best, but slower than me on the average. Apart from car number five there, who was unfortunate enough there to lead for five laps before he span off. He was doing a remarkable best lap of 136, although his average was 144. That might have been brought down by the fact that he did seem to spend quite a bit of time crashing. That was a great race back for me from my um, slightly disappointing racing at the C-Class, not from the fact that C-Class is disappointing, but the, from the fact that my own racing ability was disappointing <laughs> in that arena. So it was nice to get back to basics in the rookies and having some fun. And I've been racing the MX-5 and the Formula V and the uh, Ford 1600 as well, all in the rookies. And I've been having a remarkably good time. And I hope that I will continue to do this, learn the basics in the rookies, and at the same time, have a damn good laugh. Until next week, race safe, and I'll see you again. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Click the little bell icon if you want to be notified of any future videos.